Good morning, good morning, and happy Sunday. Another Sunday to be blessed of the Lord. How many of you are blessed and highly favored? We thank God for all that he's done, and we just want to probably give you some encouragement today. We always want to bless the Lord. We love to be in the household of prayer one more time. I'm just so excited. Can you tell? Yeah, you could tell. But look, I have a familiar passage that I want to go to. And it's from the book of Psalms 1. And we talk about being blessed. And I ask that you just lend me your ear and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart right now. And let me read the, the passage of Scripture as it is. And it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he, in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall never wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing of his holy word. And I want to tell you all, happy Mother's Day. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? Amen. To my mom and to all the moms out there viewing, this is your day. So let us pray. Father God, we glorify you in this hour, Lord. We thank you so much that, Father, that you have allowed your Holy Spirit to plant us, to fill us, Lord, to allow your living water to run through us. We thank you so much for the moms right now, Lord, and all they had to endure, and all they have to endure as we go forth even today. Lord, give them a special anointing and a double portion of your power. Give them the strength to continue to walk the straight and the narrow path, to be the example of the family, Lord. We thank you so much for all who are viewing today, Lord. We just ask that you open up our hearts and our minds and our ear to hear the message that is spoken today. Father, I ask that you cover the pastor, not only Pastor Terrell Jones, but every pastor, Father, that has lifted you up in Jesus' name. Father, they're out front. They're essential workers, Father. They have no fear because, Lord, we fear you in the reference of your power. So, Lord, we thank you today. We love you. Carry us as we go forth. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. For the Lord our God is great. Perfect Lord in all your ways. God of mercy, Lord of grace. The Holy One, ancient of Happy Mother's Day. We thank God for your joining us on this morning. We have a special request and we're trying to grant that. 
We're going to sing a special song for you on this Mother's Day. And it's on behalf of Miss Cheryl McNeil. She has asked for this request for her daughter, Zaya, who's celebrating one year anniversary of a transplant. And we just thank God for her success. And we pray that you are blessed as you enjoy this selection with us. Never let a day go by. for all of you who want to give and we thank God for this opportunity that we have at Secure Give on our website newsaintbethel.org you're able to go to the page where it says Secure Give it's on the dashboard there and if you hit that you will follow the instructions there we have that for you you can donate make any contribution you desire in that way electronically we also have two other opportunities. You can mail it to our address at 4201 8th Avenue, Sacramento, California, 95817. Those of you who stay here in town, you can also drop it off at that same address, 4201 8th Avenue, uh, here in Sacramento. You drop it in the front door in the mailbox there. We'll, it's a secure place, and you'll be able to make your contribution and you'll be able to receive it. So we thank you for all of your donations up to this very moment and even those of you who have a design, we appreciate it very much and pray God's special blessing upon you. It could have been me It should have been me It should have been me It would have been me If it wasn't for the blood It could have been me It should have been me It would what if, if what it was the blood, blood, it could have been me. Thank God for it the blood. It should have been me. It would have been me. If it wasn't for the blood. Grace, grace, mercy, 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 
mercy, with mercy, mercy. God bless you this morning. We thank God once again for this beautiful Mother's Day. We are sharing with you from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. 2 Timothy 1, 3 through 7. And I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, and without ceasing I remember you in prayer day and night. Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and then your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that it is in you also. Verse number six says, and therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the, of power and love and of a sound mind. We thank God for the reading of his word. Let us pray together. Eternal God, our Father, we do love you and thank you so much for your word. We thank you for all who hear us on this morning. We pray, God, your special blessing and anoint us afresh that we proclaim your word, that you receive all the glory and all the praise. We thank you for all the mothers who have served uh, their families and even other families. We pray that you bless them right where they are. And so now we pray that you would hide us behind the cross, that they may see Jesus and him only. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. 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 The message on this morning from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. The title is The Heritage We Leave Behind. The Heritage We Leave Behind. Is there a strong woman in your family? Is there a mother or a sister or a grandmother or an aunt, person who has significance uh, in your life. Perhaps there's a person who is not even a blood relative who has influenced your upbringing, made you the person that you are on today. These persons seem to be always able to tackle hard problems and things that come up. No matter where they are, no matter what they are, they are able to rise to the occasion. We thank God and we honor those persons who have been a blessing in our life in that way. You need to reflect and think about that person who has been a blessing to you. Person who has been a blessing in your life in such a significant way. What is the heritage that they have left for you that you are leaving for those who are behind you? In reading and studying, we found Dr. David Jeremiah, he wrote a note and even a question in his study Bible, and I thought it would be good for us to hear on this morning. And if you were standing, it says, and if you were standing on the threshold of eternity and looking back over your life, would you be able to see that your faith lives in others, especially your family members? I said, when you stand at the threshold of eternity and you look back over your life, would you see that you have exemplified and passed down faith to those who follow behind you, specifically your children and your loved ones, those who are close by you? I thank God for this example that we have on this morning because Paul is talking to young Timothy. Paul had met him in Derby and Lystra. Asia Minor, that is, and we found that he was there ministering, and as Paul was there ministering, he ran up on a young man named Timothy. And the Bible says that he was the son of a Jewish woman named Eunice. And the father was Greek, which means she was a Jewish person married to a Gentile. Paul saw that the faith that 
in the faithfulness of Timothy, and he desired to have him go with him in ministry. Paul had Timothy circumcised because he had to be recognized as a Jew. Circumcision was a recognition of your Jewish uh, upbringing following the, the circumcision of Abraham. And so therefore, in order to minister to those in Gentile as well as Jewish communities, he circumcised, had Timothy circumcised so that he could minister properly in those Jewish communities and even around the world. We thank God for uh, what Paul did in the life of Timothy. This is Paul's final letter. This is final letter to uh, his son, Timothy, whom he had adapted, being that uh, he is his spiritual father, being that his real father is not available or not going to church with him or not believing as he uh, uh, should or would have. We just thank God that there are persons that come up in our lives that bless our lives. But Timothy didn't get here by himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we find that Timothy got there because of his grandmother and his mother. His grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, uh, they had faith before and they passed it on to their children. Doesn't this look like our families today? Doesn't it look like what we see in our day now? Uh, where We have grandmothers who are by themselves and they have their daughters there with them and their daughter has children. And we see that in our time today. But isn't it something that God blesses them in spite of what they don't have? Not looking at whether a man is there or not. They are, have the ability, they have been given the ability of Almighty God to press their way and instill and pass into their children the faith that will keep you when nothing else can. We thank God that Paul used a, a great phrase there. He says, remember. He said it four times in between verses 3 and 6. He says he used a verb that is associated with remembering. Uh, he used that four times and that reminds all of us that no Christian is an island. All of God's children stand on the shoulders of those who have preceded them. And so we thank God for uh, those who have gone before us and formed a foundation for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I had access to a private letter. It was given to me by one young lady, and it communicates how she feels about her mother. And it says this, my mother and I were very close up to her passing last year. She was very loving and kind and taught me many things. I miss her all the days of my life. I treasure the words and the things she loved. One thing she loved above all others is elephants. She always said that they were beasts of burden, kind, loving, very gentle in spirit. The oldest female was the matriarch, unbelievably strong, yet gentle, holding her family together. During a drought, the mother could lead her family 300 miles just to receive water. The male or the bull was the protector, kept the family safe from harm. And then she says, my gift to you hopefully will symbolize the strength and the beauty of family. And you say, well, how does that apply to us today? Ladies and gentlemen, mothers have always demonstrated that, gen that gentle kindness, that kindness that only comes from Almighty God. Even though they are strong, even in character, they are gentle. They know how to be strong. They know how to be kind. They, need to, they know how to be gentle uh, whenever it's necessary. And we just thank God for the blessing of a mother. And we thank God for the reflection, reflection that a daughter has given of her mother. The first thing we realize in this particular passage as we proceed ahead is that faith that is strong enough to stand by your children. Faith 
genuine faith is the heritage that we pass down has to be faith that is strong enough to stand by your children. We see a grandmother. Her name is Lois. She was devoted. She was dedicated. She was determined. And I thank God for those in my life who are devoted. They were dedicated and they were determined. I thank God for my mother. I thank God for my grandmother. And I'm sure that you do the same for your family members. But was it somebody else who was a grandmother to you that wasn't your blood relative? But when we look in the Bible, we see that there are several persons who, uh, even as you look into motherhood, they never had it easy on their way. It was always a challenge, and that's why we thank God for you on this morning, because many of you have suffered uh, mighty, 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 mighty in great ways. And therefore, we want to thank God for you on this morning. There are persons like Sarah. Sarah had to bear a child at an old age, and his name was Isaac. But we just thank God that even when things seem like they're impossible, isn't it good to know that God makes a way? Out of no way. And then we also see Hannah. She bore a child uh, even as she asked God and prayed for God. And God gave her Samuel and she gave Samuel right back to God. We see that there's another mother, Elizabeth, who bore John the Baptist even in her old age. But we just thank God that she sent out a man and she passed along the faith to him. And God used him in a miraculous and a mighty way. We thank God for Mary, Mary, the, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, who bore him and brought him into the world. How God had used her. She had to hold many things in her mind and even in her spirit. But God was going to use that, that, that child that came into the world to die for all humanity. It, the responsibility of mothers is ever so great. We thank God for mothers. We thank God for grandmothers. And we thank God for their strength. Strength to stand by their children. Strength to endure hardness as great soldiers. We thank God today for those of you who are Proverb 31 women. You're loyal to your family. You're industrious uh, in your work. You do the best that you can economically to make sure that your needs are met. You make sure that you have uh, meat and food items in your, in your home to secure your family and make, that they're, make sure that they are taken care of. You save and you pinch pennies and your economic uh, uh, economically inclined in order to take care of your family to make sure that they have the resources that they need. And whenever you can't buy it, you go in the kitchen and you make a way out of no way. And you're not just seasonal. You do it uh, in good season and you also do it when it's bad. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the rain or the weather problem. You're going to make sure that you take care of your family. And I thank God for what he has done and I thank God for what he's doing through you and I right now. And many of us when we show up and when we see each other again, many of us don't know what has transpired behind closed doors. Because when mothers, they might struggle in private, but when they come out, they don't look like what they've gone through. The experiences that they have overcome, the hardships that they've endured, they make sure that their children look good. And I found out that when, even when you're struggling, when you come out, God takes your little and he makes it become much. I thank God for stretching your resources and stretching uh, all the material things that you have had in order to make a way. Even when there seemed to be uh, no way. And I don't know about you, but I'm reminded of a song that we used to sing on our way up. And where I get that song from, ladies and gentlemen, is because we're talking about exemplifying and demonstrating and having a heritage of faith, a genuine faith that we pass on to our children. And when you demonstrate faith, I believe that God endows us with his grace. Oh, yeah, he, he endows us with grace, his amazing grace. And somebody said, oh, how sweet the sound and it saved a wretch life. Like me, but I like one of the verses that goes forth and it says, Through many 
dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. But he says, grace has brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me on. How many of you thank God for the grace that he gives you? Grace to accomplish those things which are impossible. Grace to accomplish and comp climb mountains where you never ever thought you would be able to uh, make it. Obstacles that you were able to overcome because God gave you his special strength. He renews you and gives you a steadfast spirit to hold on a little while longer. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have that strength? Well, let's pass that strength on down as a heritage to our children and our grandchildren. As, as Lois has done for Timothy, has done for Eunice. We thank God for her example. Why don't you be that example? Not only should we have faith that is strong enough to endure and stand by our children, we also have to have faith that is stable enough to endure loneliness. Sometimes it gets lonely in ministry, and I know many of you experience that. Loneliness, is, you never get appreciated for the work that you do or have done. But I'm here to let you know that God sees you right where you are. Faith that is stable enough to endure loneliness, hard times, and even embarrassment. But I thank God today that we have a word for you that God will keep you. Even in your loneliness, we find that Eunice was married to a Greek man. Not talking about his nationality at all. But he was not a believer and there are people in our church, people that are listening to me right now. You are saved, but your mate, your friend, your spouse, your baby's daddy is not saved. You, you have to bring your child to church by yourself. You have to go to the meetings by yourself. You have to be faithful by yourself. You have to raise them up in the standards of Christ-likeness uh, by yourself. It gets lonely sometimes. You don't have all the resources you need and you find yourself in hard times. Not only that, but it could be uh, you're embarrassed, embarrassed to stand in a line, but you stand there because you love your children, waiting on aid to come, standing in line to sign up for programs to supplement yourself and your family. But your desire is greater for your children than to allow them to go without. You'll do whatever you can. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw on the news just the other day, there was a mother who was in line at the food bank. She was driving in her car. She had her seven-year-old daughter in the back. And, she, and they interviewed her and they said, well, why are you here? She said, it was a debate between taking the money that I do have and paying the mortgage or to go shopping. So I paid the mortgage and I got in line because I, I believe that uh, they will help me along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be too ashamed to get in line. And I know that there are some hard times and that's a reality that we're experiencing right now. But I, I don't know about you, but we want our children to eat. Yes, we want, and I know your mothers are, are struggling and you're straining and trying to make your way, or you have done it in the past, but we pray God's double portion of his power on your life and on your, on your family. There's another passage I want to read. It comes from Reverend Wright, Reverend Roosevelt Wright. He wrote this, and I want to share this with you. And it speaks about the women in our lives. It says, our history is that of mothers, grandmothers and great-grandmothers who seem to have been equipped with what, what the essentials necessary to address circumstances of the family. In the time in which they lived, they had what it took to get their families through. Whether it was courage, whether it was scholarship or willingness to arise above deprivation, God always seemed to use them in a particular way, as if they were born for such a time as this. Ladies and gentlemen, you were born for such a time as this. Mothers, you were 
born for such a time as this. Be stable. Have a pass down a stable faith that's in, in, in order for you to endure this loneliness that comes our way, the hard times that come our way, the embarrassment that might come our way. Last of all, ladies and gentlemen, not only should we have faith that is strong enough to stand with our children and also believe in God, faith that is stable enough to endure loneliness. Last of all, faith that is sincere enough to render service and sacrifice even in troubling times. Do you have a genuine and sincere faith? That's what's going to be passed down from one generation to the next. And I thank God that we have an example here of a grandmother, Lois, who has passed down to her daughter, Eunice, who has passed down to the, the receiver of this particular letter, Timothy, who was pastoring a church and he saw his leader, his spiritual father, be cast into prison. He cried when he saw him cast there. And Paul said, don't worry about it. Everything is going to work out all right. He said, I just want you to hold on to the faith that you have received from your mother and your grandmother. I need you to hold on to your faith. He said, time is going to get, get hard, but I need you to hold on. And when you have a sincere faith, you will serve and you will sacrifice even when times get hard. Ladies and gentlemen, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 says As I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, by a loving God, he said, I beseech you to surrender your entire life. Surrender your life and dedicate it to God and then be not conformed to this world but transformed by the renewing of your spirit and renewing of your mind. We need to make sure that we keep God first in everything. Paul is suggesting for Timothy, he said, son, I want you to remain in God. And then I want you to resolve to never leave him uh, nor forsake him. Just hold on to his unchanging hand. Not only that, I want you to remember remember the anointing that has been given to you and I want you to stir it up I want you to stir up the gift that's already been when we laid hands on you we knew that you had an anointing we knew that you had a call and we thank God for your mother and we thank God for your grandmother who passed it on down to you but we thank God for you son now it's time for you to walk in a genuine faith this is our heritage that we leave behind ladies and gentlemen what heritage are you leaving for your children? Is it strong? Is it sincere? Is it stable? Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you love God from the depths of your heart. Make sure that you continue to give him the glory and the praise. Mothers, it's going to get hard sometimes. Fathers, it's going to get hard sometimes. But let us lean on the everlasting arms of almighty God. Because he is the one who would keep us. And I heard a story, and I would just want to share this on my way out. I want to make sure that I share this with you because it was a blessing to my soul. I heard a story about a young man who was wild. He was, he was a wild, he was trying to be a gangster, living with his mother. And his mother did the best she could to hold him down. But one day, he grabbed a gun. He grabbed a gun and he, he went into a convenience store and she shot a man. He shot a man dead. Mother found him and she, she went running after him even after he had gotten out into the street. And when she found him in this convenience store, there he was standing over a man whom he was trying to rob and he shot him dead. Mother did this. She pushed him out of the door. She said, go on your way. She took the gun and she, she aimed it at the ground. She shot a shot into the ground and she stood there until the police came. When the police came, they came up to her and they asked her, she said, why did you do this? She said a crime had commit, been committed. And a price had to be paid. That's all she said. A crime has been committed. 
And a price had to be paid. And then the son comes to visit her sometime later, even after he had tried to say, it was me. It was a mama, but it was me. And he said, he said, mama, why did you do it? Why did you do that? And he said, I, I did it for you because a crime had commit, been committed and a price had to be paid. And he said, I did it so you'll have another chance. I did it so you get a second chance uh, in life. And mothers lay down their lives in that way too many, too often for their children who sometimes don't even appreciate the second chance. But I'm here to tell you that there's another son who had laid down his life. Jesus on Calvary. He went up on Calvary and I wish that it was me and it should have been me, but I wasn't good enough. He pushed me out of the way ladies and gentlemen and he died in my place. Why? Because a crime had been committed and somebody had to pay. And I thank God that Jesus paid it all. And all to him, you and I all sin had made it crimson, left a crimson stain, but he wiped it white as snow. And I thank God for standing. I thank God for grandmothers. I thank God for the mothers. And I thank God for all of you. But let's give God praise for the second chance. How many of you thank God for the heritage that has been passed down to you and I? Let's give him the glory and let's give him the praise while we truly have an opportunity. We never know when our last day will be. But I thank God for for Lois. I thank God for Eunice. I thank God for Timothy. They represent all of our families. Let us go forth and pass down from one generation to the next a genuine faith that gives glory to God. That gives glory to God. Let's pray together. Eternal God, our Father, we do love you. Thank you for the sacrifice you made. Thank you, God, for standing in our place. Thank you for gracing us with the ability to hold on, even in the midst of hard times, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. You have stood up so boldly in the lives of these mothers and grandmothers and caretakers. So we pray, God, that you give them a double portion of your power, even now. We pray that you bless them right where they are. Bless them physically, financially, and spiritually. So we love you, and we offer our children to you. And if there's any that's unsaved among us, we would that you speak to their hearts, call them out of darkness, even into the marvelous light. We'd be mindful to give you the glory and the praise. So we love you, and we thank you for this beautiful day that you've allowed us to enjoy. We pray that you bless us as we go, and it's in Jesus' name and for his sake, every heart say amen.